Hi, my name is Mary Ann Walker and I'm the North American Product Specialist for Copic Markers. I've had the pleasure of working with Copic now for almost 12 years and today I wanted to show you how to color a cute little image of a person but throwing blues and purples into the shadow tones. So when I'm coloring an image with a person, I always start with my lightest color and I try to work fairly fast because I don't want to go back and blend. When you go back and blend your skin tones, you run the risk of getting blotchy color areas. So I try to color fast but very smoothly so that I'm not getting any blotchiness. To do that, you'll notice I color a lot with the side of the brush. And I'm using sketch markers. Sketch and Chow markers have this wonderful flexible brush. And I use the side of it to get large smooth areas. I'm not going to go back and blend, I'm just going to keep layering and layering colors to get the depth that I need. So I just keep layering and smoothly blending and I might go outside the lines a little bit but I'm not too worried because skin tones tend to be pale when I'm coloring a pale little boy sitting in the sun so I can always fix those mistakes or hide them. Okay so at this point I have my basic color layers down. Now I'm going to add in hints of my deepest shadow to make him look rounded and to have good contrast. It's the contrast that makes the images pop. So at this point, he's nicely colored, but he still doesn't have much contrast. All of his skin tones are in the earth tone family. So I'm going to come in now with a blue, a nice pale blue and I'm going to punch my shadows up just a notch. Now, you might be afraid to use blue when coloring skin, but it's amazing what kind of a difference it makes. And I'm not using a deep blue, just a little hint of blue in only the shadow areas. You can also throw in a little bit of purple. but I'm only putting it in the shadow areas. I'm not just putting a bunch of purple all over the place. What a difference now his skin tones have. If you feel that it's too blue or too purple, the opposite side of the face, I'm going to come in with a pale pink. And I'm going to pull some more pink tones in. And so what you get is a range of tones that make your images look more natural, more believable, and more interesting to look at. Then when you go in and color the rest of the image, you'll notice how flat the colors look until you throw in a greater range. So coloring with a wider range of colors, adding lots of contrast. Look at how just coloring with two browns looks very dull. So I'm going to come in and with his hair, I'm going to throw in a blue again. But the blue that I used on his skin was too pale. So I'm going to use a slightly darker blue. And I just want to add a little bit of excitement to the tones. So it's not quite so flat. And to finish off the image, I want to add highlights with a very pale yellow. So I'm just going to pick out that strongest sunlight with just hints of yellow. So when you are coloring, 
try to break away from simple color groups. Get more life into your image by pulling in blues or purples or yellows into areas that you wouldn't normally use them.